Hey, welcome to session two as we prepare to go on missions here at Celebration Baptist Church. Last time we talked about what? Being sent. What does it mean to be a sent one? And right now in module two, we want to talk about the vision and the values of God's mission. Uh, you know that if people don't have a vision for where they're going, they're not going to get there. And sometimes we do missions like we do other things in life. We draw circles around uh, uh, whatever we're wanting to hit. So instead of having a target, we just uh, put something there and say, oh, that was the target. We hit our bullseye. And so instead of just saying we uh, want to let you go out and just put a dot and then draw the target around and say, oh, we did a great job. Let's, let's talk about what God wants, what his vision is for your time. In, in the next several weeks and days as you prepare, you're going to be preparing for a very small amount of time, actually, where you are going to go serve God in another place. And um, God's vision for your life, your vision for your team, and vision for those you're going to be with is very unique. But also, I believe it is, uh, from His Word, applicable to all. So, what is the vision? God's vision for His church and for us is that every believer would be equipped, would be empowered, would be sent out of local churches to carry the good news to all the world and extend the gospel of God for the glory of Christ. So, I, I look at that and I think, that's wonderful. That's a great vision. The greatest thing that we got to think of in missions is, is not about us. It's about God. And it's also about us going to bless the local church in Ecuador, in Ethiopia, in Tanzania, in Spain. It's us blessing this local church and allowing them to grow and to reach out and to bless the people they're around. They're responsible for their Jerusalem as we are responsible here in Tallahassee for our Jerusalem. So what are our values? First of all, we want to value that every believer is called out to live God's mission, God's great commission and His great commandment. Great commission to go and make disciples of all nations, great commandment to love God with all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself. I love what the Bible says in 1 Peter 4.10. It, it says that each of you should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. And uh, the, the, the neat thing about the starting of the church in Acts is what? Is that when they received the Holy Spirit, the promised Holy Spirit, they were to do what? They were to be witnesses. Not just witnesses in light, but witnesses in big. And there were to be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I, I love to describe it as this. God's value is that you as a believer would serve God personally in your own relationships, in your own home, where God has put you, to be on mission then also where? Locally and then go globally to the ends of the earth. Number two in our values. We were every church would impact its, its community and partner with kingdom partners to fulfill the Great Commission. You know, what is going to last at the end of the days is not fancy organizations or opportunities or causes, but what's going to last is the church. And Jesus in Matthew 16, 18 says, you know, P Peter, this, on this rock, your confession of me, I'm going to build my church and the gates of Hades. Nothing will be able to go against it. So we know that the church is going to last. So we want to value and work with local churches, partner with pastors, leaders that are going to make a difference for the long term. You and I go and we'll be there five days, ten days, but they will be there for a long term. Number three, we want to value that every mission engagement point of our teams, you going, should be to prepare and to equip others to stay there and keep the impact going farther. 2 Timothy 2.2 says this, And the things you heard from me, says Paul to Timothy, among many witnesses, these entrust to faithful men that will be able to teach others also. We want you to take time to think about how can I help teach somebody else what I know so they can teach others. That's what we're about in missions. And lastly, we're called to be those that carry the good news of hope in Jesus Christ. 
we're called to talk to people about the gospel of salvation. We're going to later on, we're going to give you some skills and some tools because in the world today, we would say that 1.7 billion people have never heard about Jesus Christ dying on a cross for their sins and that through faith in them, they could come into a relationship with him. They have no access to this good news. One third of the world lives in slums, it means they have no housing, no permanent running water. And most of the world lives on less than two dollars a day. 1.2 billion people in this world are illiterate. It means they can't. If you give them a track or we pop it up on the internet, they couldn't read it if, you, if they wanted to in their language. The reality is that God is calling you and I to be willing to go into these places and to bring hope into places that never had hope. So my prayer for you as you think through all this, you put your head to work on it, is that you'll be able to see that God can use you. Now, let's get to the heart of the matters. The heart of the matters, as we look at these values and the vision of God for us, is that we can have confidence that God is going to use us to change the world. I, I love what Jesus says, you are the light of the world. When he says you're the light of the world, he wasn't talking about maybe, he's talking about yes. Because in, with Jesus in our life, God, God has established us to be light. So we can have confidence that Jesus is with us and he's going to make our lives light. Another thing we can be confident about is that we have gifts and skills that God has given us. You might say, I don't want to preach, teach. I just love to serve and do. Some of the greatest missionary teams that have gone out have been those with people that weren't in the front, but those that were in the back. I would encourage you as you're thinking about what you need to be about, what values you have, value this, value the sitting with somebody, value getting to know and becoming friends with people different than yourselves, and value having compassion, loving, caring for those that are hurting and broken in the world without hope. That will change your life. So my, my, my challenge to you is, are you confident God can use you? Now, our goal is that as you go, you'll have things in your program that you say, well, I can't do that, but I can do that. Or if you're looking at the next several days, you'll say, well, I can pray and I can do this, but I can't do that. Now, find where God has made you to fit. Your leader will help you find that and serve God fully. But there'll be some things you're asked to do that really aren't exciting. I want you to get ready for that. Uh, who likes to go and cut grass? Well, some of you might. Well, who likes to go clean out the bathroom? Or who likes to go get water and bring it in? And uh, those little things that mean a lot to your team and to the mission, be ready to step into those things. Well, as you look at your hands and what you can do with your hands, I, I want to ask you to think about some questions today that we'll, you'll think about in your own context. And as we finish up, I want to challenge you to think about the next context. These are questions that I, I think that all missionaries, those sent, should be asking. Now, first, the exercise today is just for you where you are thinking about the needs in your area. First question is this, what are the needs that are most prevalent in your community? Whether felt needs or those needs that are real needs, underlying needs. Now, what are the, what's the difference? Felt needs can be Wow, I just need money or I just need food. You see somebody who's homeless on the street, they need food. That could be a real felt need. Now, what they really need is they really need Jesus to change their heart. They need to leave addiction behind. They need a community around them. They need to forgive and forget the past and move forward into the hope that God gives them. So that's what we talk about, felt needs and real needs. So... Question being, what are the real needs in your community here in Tallahassee that you're around? What are the needs you've seen in your community? Who is tackling these big needs in your community that you know of, and what is the church doing? Number three, how could you see God using you to make a difference? If God has given us in the body of Christ all the gifts we need to be the real body of Christ, which I know He has, then... 
What are those gifts you have here that you could be taking with you? It'd be neat in your group and your team to talk about your gifts and to say, wow, I have a gift of mercy. I just love to go serve people or I like to organize things. Those type of people I love to be around because I don't like to do that. So y'all organize and I'll talk about it. And, uh, but in your team, talk about your different gifts. And it, you can talk about it in the reference of w how do you see God using you in the world here in Tallahassee? To make a difference. And then lastly, who could come join you in serving? If you look at all these big needs, it's not a few people. You want to get others involved. And so four questions. Let me review them. What's the biggest needs, felt or real? Who's tackling these needs? What's the church doing? How could you see God using you? And who could you serve with? Think about that here in Tallahassee. And then after that, Think about it wherever God's leading you as a team. You don't know everything where you're going, but maybe it's a good time to flip it and to think out that way. May God bless you as, as you review, think about Him planting His mission in you and God using you to make a difference where He is leading you right now. Let me pray for you as you go out. Lord, uh, I thank you that in Christ... Uh, we are new creations. We are new people. The old is gone, the new has come. And today, I pray for my brothers and sisters that they would realize that, as Ephesians 2.10 says, that we are work, you've created us into workmanship, you know, these, these, these vessels that you're going to use to bless others. So we just ask today that you would bless others through each life that's surrendered to you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you that you know where we're going, know where we are, and you're the one taking us. We acknowledge you in Jesus' name. Amen.